go to the cloud. How, how, well, first off, I love both of your films, and I'd like to know your origins as a writer. When you had the confidence to know that you could write a screenplay, you talk about the themes of innocence, it's a very big part of your artistic aesthetic, but how did you find that confidence and how did you, how were you able to make such great screenplays with these two films? Was it years in the making as far as honing your craft as a writer? Uh, thank you, Greg. Um, you know, to hear uh, a person like you say these things, it really means a lot to me. You know, um, I always tell people that I didn't go to film school, I didn't go to writing school, and I took this career up because uh, of my love of storytelling. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, a large part of how I create is uh, my culture, my, my spirituality. Um, you know, yes, I'm a filmmaker, but I got into filmmaking because I love telling stories. Uh, you know, you, you might have uh, read that I'm also a photographer. I started off my career as a photographer and then I transitioned into filmmaking, writing and directing. But then at the end, the reason why I write, the reason why I make films, the reason why I take photos is because I have this deep, deep love for storytelling. And um, I think it goes, you know, back to my culture, you know, uh, in Bhutan, uh, in the Bhutanese language, storytelling is such a fundamental, important part of who we are as the people. Yet, it's very interesting, Greg, because we don't even have a word for storytelling. And that's not because the Bhutanese culture is backward or, you know, our vocabulary doesn't have the richness to have, you know, words like that. But it is because it is so important. So in English, I'll be, Greg, tell me a story. But in my country, in my language, we will say, Greg, please untie a knot for me. So the act of telling a story is supposed to have that purpose of untying, of freeing, and of liberating. And uh, that's the culture I grew up in. I grew up in a culture where from a young age, my grandparents, my parents, my elders... They would always tell stories with that key motivation to help untie knots, to, you know, to take me or all the other listeners to, you know, uh, to a higher place with the act of storytelling. Uh, so for me, you know, um, the way I write, I think it's to untie knots. And my own background, you know, my multicultural background, I think plays a big part in how I tell stories, yeah. how I untie knots. <laughs> regarding regarding untie, untying knots, I, I mean, I remember as a youth, I really loved neo realism, where you use non actors in cinema, mm. in Italian cinema, they had it, and it's neo -real, realism is a big part of cinema. It's a big part of what you do as well. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about untying the knots with people in real life who you meet, you get inspired by their stories, and their mm -hmm. actual personal stories become part of your story? How, oh, how yes, did you yes. develop that? That's amazing. I, I like that. I, how you, um... yeah. I think, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm just such a lover of stories. And uh, I think that makes me, a, you know, a very curious listener of stories as well. And, uh, you know, I'm always listening. I'm always meeting people. I'm always talking to them about, the, about their own lives, their stories. And last time, like, you know, when I was uh, traveling around the U.S. with The Monk and the Gun, I spoke to some, you know, film schools. And I was telling the film schools that, the students. I was like, never lose that curiosity, you know, because you will never know where you will be able to encounter an amazing story. Uh, you know, for the Lunana Ayak in the classroom, uh, I was having lunch with this teacher, you know, and he, he was teaching. Uh, I went to meet him because he was teaching children who, who were deaf. He was he was a teacher for the uh, for the deaf. And I went to meet him for that. And he started telling me this amazing story of how he was posted in the Highlands, you know, when he was a young man. And he told me, he was like, oh, you know, we were above the tree line. And, uh, you know, there was no firewood to make a fire. So every every day after school, I would have to hike up this mountain to collect yak dung because yak dung was the only source of fuel. And he said, after some time, I got so tired. So I caught the yak and I brought him down and I tied him in my classroom and I taught my class with a yak in the classroom. And then, you know, for me, the moment he said that, I was like, what? You know, like as a photographer, I was like, you know, that would look so amazing to have a yak in the classroom. And of course he told me he didn't have a blackboard. So he wrote on the mud wall, 
and all that you know suddenly it just clicked and the inspiration came uh, for the screenplay for the film and how we could tell the story um even with uh, you know the monk and the gun i think the monk and the gun the inspiration comes really from my own background you know um it was not one singular story or moment where i'm like ah ping you know this is the kind of story i want to tell um in bhutan we have a saying that one will never see their own eyelashes because you know they are so close to you but for me i was a bhutanese but yet i was considered an outsider because i grew up outside i lived outside and but then that put me in a unique position to be able to see my own eyelashes uh studying uh, political science uh growing up as a diplomat son in in you know different places around the world i could see how uh modernization dem- democracy um all that where you know things that were so celebrated and venerated but at the same time you know i, I on the other hand i come from a culture where we were you know turning away these changes you know trying to hold back trying to uh, remain as we are because we wanted to protect our culture and our way of life and you know at the end change is inevitable and i think my background put me in this position where i could see that you know in the pursuit of something that you thought you needed you end up losing what you already have you know i, I just got to ask this question me and my uh, podcast partners we we love pem zam so much and we were always uh-huh. we wanted to ask you when are we going to see more of her she just seems like a nat- <laughs> like all, so many of, of your non actors they seem so mm. natural but mm. you know what was it like getting all that accolades for her performance as well oh it was amazing you know when when i first wrote the script out and i sent it to my cinematographer he looked at me and he said pow you will not find this girl in the whole of forget about in lunana where there's like five kids but in the whole of bhutan you might have to bring her from outside uh, but we went to bhutan and we discovered her there you know and uh, for me oh, what what i tried to do with her is i wanted to protect her you know i you know she was someone who has never seen the outside world forget about acting in films she's never even seen a light bulb that scene where uh, you know she's brush, brushing her teeth was the first time she ever put you know had tasted toothpaste um so for me i i i i wanted to make this film in a way i protected who she was so uh after we casted her the screenplay went through a lot of phases where instead of me trying to force her to be another character i was actually molding the screenplay around her own life so she was just telling her own story uh through getting to know her i realized her father was a drunk she didn't have a mother she was being looked after by her grandmother so i tried to incorporate that you know in 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 the story and uh, uh, you know uh, some film uh, you know critics also ask me how what do you do to help your non professional actors and you know i say that you know i try to shoot in a linear fashion so that they them the, the characters can grow with the story and with uh, a yak in the classroom you know we shot in a linear fashion and at the, at the end it was that scene where she says goodbye to the teacher and you know she actually cried in that scene it, it was so touching and for me uh and for everyone involved with the film you know oh, that was the moment that pemzam was saying goodbye not only to the teacher but to us you know to this family to these friends that she had made who had spent two months with her you know uh, being there with her and she she knew that that was the moment she would be saying bye to us so she started crying um but i'm happy to share you know with you and um uh your your followers that uh, pemzam and i we are still very connected uh it, after the completion of the film it was uh, you know a priority for me to help her uh, you know because she became like kind of like the ambassador of bhutan cinematic ambassador of bhutan to the rest of the world and i knew that if she continued in lunana she would probably end up dropping out of school middle school because there is no high school there uh, she would probably end up getting married by the time she was 18 and becoming a yak herder and she had so much potential so you know um uh, at first her father was reluctant to let her go but we were able to arrange something and through her own merit now she's studying in the most prestigious boarding school in bhutan uh, the royal academy which is a uh, initiative started by the king of bhutan and you know she got scholarships there she's studying there um, i'm kind of assigned as one of her guardians uh, we are in touch so it's amazing last question right off the top of your head can you name one of your all time favorite movies and you mentioned how much you love korea as well but what's one of your all time favorite movies and why is it so special uh, for you uh 
Ozu's Tokyo story. Um, I think uh, it's one of the most authentic stories, human stories, you know, uh, there is. In such a simple way, it teaches us so much. And it's timeless, you know, it's timeless. It, it, it touches upon authentic human values, human stories that, uh, you know, you, you can travel the world. You know, it's a Japanese story about family loss. But then, you know, you can travel the world. You can travel to any part of the world. And, you know, there are people in Europe, in America, in, in Africa, in you know, and everyone, they see their own values in that story. And I think at the end, that is what film is. Film is a mirror upon which our own stories are reflected upon. Thank you so much for your time. I really love The Monk and the Gun. And again, I'm looking forward to talking to you, to you for the next one. Thank you so much, Greg. All right, you take Thank care. Thank you for your interest. Bye -bye. You, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Natalie.